While the fight against COVID is far from over, the story does have some real bright spots today, even some things to celebrate, including a milestone in a province that has seen some of the worst of the pandemic in Canada. Ontario reporting no new COVID-19 related deaths today. The first time that's happened since October of last year. In Atlantic Canada, the picture is also looking bright. Both Newfoundland and New Brunswick reporting no new cases. And in New Brunswick, active cases have fallen to the lowest level in a long time, with just 10. Meanwhile, in New York City, the mood was something else. Thousands hit the streets for a ticker tape parade to say thank you to essential workers for pulling that city through the pandemic. So here's some food for thought. According to a new study from Canada's COVID-19 Immunity Task Force, in a sample of 10,000 Canadians, the age group with the largest prevalence of COVID-19 antibodies was kids between ages 1 and 19. But think about that. Kids 12 and under have never been vaccinated, and the results came from months ago before most of Canada was vaccinated. So what that tells us is that kids have been getting infected at a pretty alarming rate, even if that would rarely lead to severe illness or death. So what does that mean? Well, kids, when infected, often don't present as being very sick at all, but they can still transmit infection, of course. So as this country continues to reopen, uh, social circles expanding, how should we understand the risk that they and we are taking on? Well, joining me now, Dr. Fatima Kakar, a pediatric infectious diseases specialist in Montreal. Uh, we'll try not to talk about the Habs tonight. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Lennox Wong, Chief Medical Officer at Sick Kids Hospital here in Toronto. Uh, we won't talk about the Leafs either. So, uh, <laughs> Dr. Wong, um, let me just ask you this. Are, are kids under 12 something of a blind spot? Well, Andrew, I don't think they're a blind spot to healthcare professionals. We've known all along that children under 12 do get COVID. And we've also known that they are not very symptomatic with COVID. And I think for members of the public, they may have conveniently thought that perhaps children don't get it at all. Um, but from a, from, a, uh, from a healthcare professional standpoint, we've known this all along. And that's why we've given guidance in the past and currently around uh, making sure that there's social distancing, making sure people are careful um, with, uh, with who they're in contact with. But okay, you make a really interesting point there about how convenient it has been uh, <laughs> sort of to, to let under 12s fly under the radar. Dr. Kakar, I mean, I'm a parent, right? When I see my kids playing with other kids at a playground, I, I don't think much of it because I feel like on the balance of things, it ought to be safe. But you tell me, I mean, what would you either add or, or change about that understanding? I think it is important that everybody be reassured, and, and this study confirms that kids are not very sick from COVID. What, what it confirms is that kids are asymptomatic. So what this means is that if you're at high risk, uh, if you're unvaccinated, if you're elderly in multiple conditions, or if you, you're poorly vaccinated, you only have one dose so far, you might be at higher risk, so you potentially should be more careful around kids under 12. But And then how would you make this sort of um, thought process practical? Because I'm thinking of, you know, like summer camps, uh, as an example, summertime activities, kids playing with each other. I mean, through what lens should parents approach those kinds of things? So I think it, it is important that we let kids have their summer, socialize, go to camp, be with other children. What is going to change is within family dynamics. So, for example, big family get-togethers where there's a grandparent and an under five who's at daycare. There is a level at risk, and I think that's where we want to be cautious to not completely go um, uh, unmasked and, and really take those chances. So it's for, for kids themselves and within family dynamics where, for example, parents are fully vaccinated, they're young, they're healthy, there's really minimal risk. But if those young children are in an environment with older people who are at risk, that's when they still have to maintain those cautions. So it changes those uh, inner family dynamics. Right. And, and Dr. Huang, those precautions, I mean, so whether we're talking about, um, you know, masking, physical distancing, those sorts of things, indoors, outdoors, what are the kinds of things that you would want parents to have front of mind? Well, I think this has brought uh, a heightened awareness of when you're symptomatic with any sort of illness. And so any child that's symptomatic with any sort of illness, we want to, them to be extra careful. We don't want them to be in contact with people who might be at risk. Uh, there's, screening, there's screening that is uh, in place already at many of the day camps and overnight camps 
I have young children who are planning on doing on going to camp or, and one who's in camp already. Adhering to those screening um, precautions is absolutely essential. Dr. Kukar, is, is the heightened awareness right now, how much of that do we attribute to the Delta variant? I mean, is that what is throwing things for a loop right now? No, it's definitely a concern. And the whole issue of under 12s not being vaccinated um, is raising this concern. Are they going to be a reservoir for the Delta and further variants down the road? And it really is quite possible because we can't just rely on their symptoms to test and to isolate these kids. And um, so it is an area of concern. And I think it is important. And I'm glad you guys are bringing this up now because what we're seeing is a surge of all these other viruses uh, in children and in, in uh, young infants, for example. Right. And it's really because these isolation measures have been put aside. So it's a good moment to actually reinforce these. And very quickly, uh, Dr. Huang, in terms of a vaccine for under 12s, I mean, to, to my knowledge, there isn't a single one that's actually in the approvals pipeline right now um, for authorization here in Canada. So, so when would a vaccine come? That's right, Andrew. We're very close, though. So the trials are underway for the mRNA vaccines. Those are the ones from Pfizer and Moderna. We expect to hear results from them. Uh, probably in the late summer, early fall. And at that point, we can then embark on decisions around uh, vaccinating children under 12 years of age. Dr. Huang, Dr. Kakar, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.